Tonight on Country Squire Radio, we're talking pipes and tobacco throughout the history of America. Plus a pipe question on leather-wrapped pipes. Quick fire questions, more questions, listener feedback, and more on tonight's Country Squire Radio starting right now. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD. Hey, Bo. Good evening, man. Man, good evening to you, sir. How are you doing tonight? You know, I'm, I'm doing great. Our, uh, our, our, our shop is... Uh, exquisitely humid today because yeah. because it's just so warm outside and uh <laughs> i'm just saying it's doing wonders for my hair i, I think my i think my um uh, tobacco jesus game is uh is on point today yeah yeah man you uh <laughs> it's uh I, i'm letting it down i kind of feel like i've got the locks uh uh, flowing. It's been, uh, I don't know. I, I don't, this doesn't even have any product in it. It's, well, it's one of these things. We just, out of nowhere, of course, we've had this ridiculous heat out of nowhere. We get a little bit of rain in and it's amazing uh, that people can live down here. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I say that often. Every like, single episode during the summer, but it's true. No, it, it's just, it's just awful. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just awful. It's absolutely true. <laughs> we, uh, you know, being in a, in a pipe shop in the South, um, you know, obviously this time of year is just, it is really terrible. And so, um, Generally, what we see is the you know uh, pipe uh, you know smoking goes down a, a smidge, and uh, cigars will kind of go up. Cigars you don't have to fool with them as much; they're a little more conducive to maybe grilling out or sitting by the pool or something like that. But um, but you know the the pipe smokers that do stick with it and are real regular, uh, a lot of times the the only place they smoke is here in the shop. Yeah, because this is the only real place they can <laughs> it's uh yeah it's it's amazing it's but, a uh, safe haven for many folks and man let me is. tell you uh over the uh the weekends uh, which by the way happy fourth of july weekend yeah happy fourth of july now do you say happy independence day. Day. all right so you say independence i day. I, I tend to go that route okay yeah uh, you know ever since the movie i feel like independence day has been a whole nother thing it's got its own uh connotation 1994 right? we we will never forget yeah of course but uh now the president's speech in that movie still the best president's speech even after the terrible sequel, it still holds up. Even after the terrible sequel, even even with real presidents, like I think, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like I know Reagan had some good ones, FDR had some good ones, but but Bill Pullman in uh, in that one, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, he had his moments. I'm a I'm a flight attendant, not a flight attendant. I'm a pilot. <laughs> That would have been a completely I'm a flight different attendant. Thing. What if you said right. that? I'm a stewardess. Right. <laughs> I'm a log in the air. Yeah, man. All right. So, uh, so happy Independence slash Fourth of July to you, you as well. You too. Uh, but yeah, no. While while most of us were enjoying our barbecue and uh, and family and beer and and all that kind of wonderful stuff, you were here laboring away as if it was Labor Day. Dude. Uh, and uh, man, we are standing. And this for those of you tuning in for the live show, you yeah. can see it. Something feels a little different here. It's a little different. So, uh, so yeah, I've probably worked about 24 hours in the past. 36 hours <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah just uh came up here to the shop uh sunday afternoon and then and then all day yesterday uh just kind of taking advantage of the three-day weekend and so um man it, it's it's very strange but we have moved the entire tobacco bar uh from the back of our shop to the front of our shop and um and it, this has been really weird bo it's been one of those things that uh you know to some people it's been an obvious uh decision of course you should do this and for other people it's been like well you know, the tobacco bar was in the back of the shop for 45 years. Why the, you know, heck would you move it now kind of thing? And, um, yeah, you know, I, I kind of put out a little uh, video to our pipe club last night. Uh, not not the general public, but just, uh, you know, the Magnolia Pipe Club. Just kind of um, giving them a little tour and explaining some of my rationale. And, um, and, and, and just to, you know, kind of uh, reiterate some of that, I, you know, I just have this um, feeling that with our, our private blends as, um, you know, popular as they are and, and also as, you know, powerful as they are, as far as the, you know, percent of our business goes, sure. you know, we, we sell a lot of things. We sell pipes, we sell uh, cigars, we sell tinned tobacco, but, um, you know, the, the private blend is kind of our, uh, the hallmark of our shop. And so, uh, you know, it's just important to me to kind of uh, have that visible from the front door, which is, uh, which is just right here. And so when people walk in there, um, they can, they can see it. They can, they can see it really easily and, uh, and approach it very easily. And, um, it was just, I, I felt convicted that that was the right thing to do. Man, so, it looks, uh, it feels good, doesn't it? it yeah. It looks beautiful. Yeah, like I walked in good. the shop. I remember seeing the video. Cause I remember you, you talked about wanting to do this for a while and it's kind of yeah. hard to visualize a little bit well, you it, know, w without seeing it. It made and sense. And I was scared. <laughs> yeah, it, it made sense, but it was always kind of hard for me to, to figure out how it was going to all flow. But like, as soon as you posted out that video and I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to go in there. Yeah. And, uh, and not only that, but like you've got, you know, and y'all can't see this on the live show, but like behind you right now, like where the camera is, we, we've got sitting rooms. So we, we might yeah. actually open we this may, up. And we may have this, to. Uh, not just a live show, but a, but a live show. A, li a li live studio audience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, we <laughs> joke, you know, we joke about the quote unquote live studio audience. Say hello, Briar. Yo. 
And that's it. <laughs> so, you know, we might actually have a, a legitimate live studio audience. Hey, we have no a offense. legitimate no studio offense. audience, no but, you know, just more than one person. Exactly. Exactly. Is, so. is, what's the what's the singular audience? Is it just audience? Audi. Audi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm on the road again. Uh, yeah, you're going to Chicago, right? I am leaving again. for Chicago. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow morning at the uh, just absolute crack of dawn. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun. We're getting in there uh, probably about uh, right before noon on Wednesday. And uh, and we will be there from Wednesday to Friday. And why are you going? Now I'm going for a podcast movement. It's a big uh, okay. uh, uh, industry kind of convention and conference type yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, really mostly going to network. We've got some great meetings lined up with some uh, really exciting folks doing some amazing things in the industry. You're going to be talking about Satchel and representing uh, the Satchel podcast player. Excited about that. But even more so excited to be able to go and visit. Uh, now, now, help me with this because I always mispronounce <laughs> it. Iwan, Ewan. I, I've always said Ewan Reese. Ewan Reese. I, I, I've always said that. See, I'm know. dyslexic. It looks like Iwan to me. Well, and and it, I, 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 some people say that. You Ewan, know? Ewan Reese. I, th there's been people because we're in the deep south that have come up to me and not, not you know, blinked at all saying it, uh, Iwan Rice. <laughs> well, there you go. And I, you know, and that, uh, that's probably just Southern for, I don't know how to say that. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, I'm excited. But, uh, man, yeah. One of the, one of the flagship pipe shops, obviously in, uh, in the United States. So yeah. It's really exciting, man. I've never been, I'd, I'd love to go sometime and, uh, man, really great guys up there, super knowledgeable. And, uh, are you going to try to meet up with some folks when you're up there? Well, that's the goal. So if you're listening and you're in Chicago and you happen to be free one evening, uh, this week, I think it'll probably be Thursday. Thursday night, but it may also be Wednesday night. I'm not sure yet. So, uh, so by the time this episode goes live, be sure to keep an eye on the uh, Facebook and Twitter page. We'll post out that information. Would love to meet up with you. I'm actually uh, already reached out to the shop about going by, and collecting some audio, doing a, a quick interview, and uh, maybe putting out a shop talk. Uh, just, I mean, what a great historic uh, yeah. location, and yeah, I uh, can't wait to hear some of the stories there and just check them out, man. I think it'll be a lot of fun. You know, it's funny. People over the past few weeks have come in and been like, "Man, your inventory's really improved, and you know, the shop's looking good. You've got so much stuff." But uh, if you want to see a pipe shop with inventory, <laughs> you need to go to Ewan Reese. Like, uh, I, now again, I've never been, but I've just heard there's just buckets and buckets full of you know, Savinelli's and Peterson. There, you know, there's literally drawers that you open that just the the front of the drawer just says like. Savinelli written in like a, you know, uh, an old school label. And then you open the door and it's just full of them, you know, and I, 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 that just blows my mind to think that, uh, you know, that, that shop does so much volume that they can sustain that. I, I love it. It just, it's really cool. I, um, I think Chuck is, uh, maybe the guy that, that either owns it or runs it and, uh, uh, really well known, obviously connected in the pipe industry and, uh, heard nothing but good things about him, even though I haven't ever interacted with him in person. So, um, man, I look forward to hearing how that goes. You have to take a bunch of pictures. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be fun. Absolutely. You know, I, I meant to do a shout out to a listener, but I can't remember the details. So never mind. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, we had <laughs> so a, I'll edit that entire part out. No, right. we, we had somebody who was it? Ah, and now I can't even remember who told me about this, this story, but it was somebody who they met somebody, they were traveling to like California or somebody and they met somebody. Yeah. And that person said, Hey, you know, where are you from? He's like, Oh, I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. Have you, are you familiar with the country squire? Like, yeah, no, I, I know that place. It's like, they do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I, I, I forgot all the details. That's the next news. It was, and then you found 20 bucks. And so it was totally uh, worth it. Cool it's, story. It's, 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 it's totally, totally worth it. Yeah. Totally. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, you know, just as anecdotally, I'd like to say, uh, it's not really an announcement, but it's just so funny in the power of social media in yeah. our industry today. Um, uh, this morning I received a shipment of tobacco in yeah, the mail yeah, yeah. and, uh, it was from our friends, uh, one of these, uh, our main distributors that we get a lot of our uh, supplies from and a lot of my blending ingredients and all that kind of stuff. And I opened the box and, uh, as I was expecting, it was, um, it was a bunch of esoterica tobacco oh. in these beautiful, shiny gold, uh, golden packages that, uh, look kind of like this. Oh, and, wow. uh, and so just, that. just really something, uh, this is a bag of Tilbury. Now, it, so now, of course they make Penzance. They, make, they, they made Penzance. They, they make Penzance. They make Stonehaven, uh, Tilbury, uh, Dunbar, uh, there's, uh, Pembroke. There, there, there's several, Man. uh, that they make. Of course, this is really small batch stuff, but I, the reason I even bring this up is, um, and, and really the only reason, of course we have, all we have left now is two bags of Tilbury wow. and, uh, and one thing of Pembroke, but, uh, the literally, all the Stonehaven and Penzance was gone in 15 minutes. My all, goodness. All I did, literally all I did was take a picture of what we got, put it on Instagram, didn't say anything except put my phone number on there. 
<laughs> and that was it. And, and like, and, and it was so funny because I, I could hear as I was, you know, taking the orders for the first, uh, you know, a pound and a half of Penzance that I sold, like, yeah. you know, it, the, I could hear it beeping in the background. So the next person was trying to get in and, and it was probably angry because they, you know, they couldn't. <laughs> sure. Sure. It was like an eBay type. It's of just thing, amazing, huh? man. Like the, you know, it shows you the power of small batch tobaccos like that. It's, it's tremendous. Of course, the folks at Esoterica do a really good job. Um, you know, they're, they're wonderful tobaccos. Um, you know, and, and a bag like this at the Country Squire, we charge uh, forty two fifty for an eight ounce bag like this. You know, there's some people that would mark that up and, you know, get, I don't know, 75, 80 bucks for that eight ounce bag. But it's, uh, you know, we think it's a, we just want to, you know, sell it at a fair price with our excise tax in Mississippi. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when it's gone, it's gone. But it's one of those things like it, it, it when you get it, it's just it's just Flies gone. Shelf. It's just gone. Yeah. So it, it's you, amazing. Have you had Tilbury before? I have not had this yet. Yeah, read it. What does the front say again? I uh, see. Utilizing finest whole leaf and traditional product techniques, uh, we take pleasure in presenting a wide variety of premium pipe tobaccos for your enjoyment. Uh, it's a broad cut, extra mature Virginia. Yeah, that's right. And uh, let's see. Entirely made, blended, and aged in the British Isles. Oh, Okay. The so less than United Kingdom over there. Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. They're not feeling very united right no, now. No, 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 um, no. But yeah, you know, this is, this stuff just goes so quickly. It's got such a, um, incredibly hardcore following a lot of folks too. They'll, you know, buy it and resell it and, or, um, buy it, split it up and then share it amongst their friends, you know, just because it's kind of hard to get. But, um, yeah, the Tilbury, it says a broad cut, extra mature Virginia. Of course, we all know what Penzance Stonehaven is. I, sure. Uh, uh, one of the guys that bought a, uh, a bag of Stonehaven this morning uh, shared a little bowl with me, which was nice. And uh, the Pembroke, read that one. That's, that's really interesting to me. And I, I've never, Ooh. I've had most of the Esoterica stuff except the Pembroke and the and and the Tilbury here. What does that say? All right, Pembroke Choice English Cognac Blend. Yeah, I, that I don't know. That there's something about that. You know, it, generally, I that wouldn't sound particularly interesting to me when you start mixing liquor yeah. and Latakia and all these things. But that um. I don't know. That sounds pretty great. Have you had it before? I never have. No. I'm inclined to buy this right now so we can pop it open to try it. it I, it's one of two tens I have left. Oh, man. It's only $14. I know. <laughs> I know. Hey, now, hey, I'm thinking about it. Hang on just a second. This has become a completely different experience now. <laughs> People are like debating, okay, now, do I have this in the budget? Yeah, I have it in the budget. Is my <laughs> wife going to be mad if I walk home with another ten of tobacco? Another, another ten, Right. Yeah. Eh, but talk to the tobacconist after the show. Maybe he'll make you. All right, all right, all right. You do produce the show. So li live people. audience, you've got all of uh, 40, about 30, 45 minutes right now if you want to call in. <laughs> Good luck to you. Whatever, the phone's unplugged. <laughs> yeah, you have to talk to me tomorrow. Man, all right. So we have got a uh, great show planned tonight. Uh, in the spirit of uh, the 4th of July, and uh, you know, which, which of course celebrates our independence, but uh, ultimately drives back to the, uh, the birth of, uh, of this uh, country that we live in here in the States, the That's United right. States That's of right. America. And, uh, and so, you know, you, you had this idea. I had the idea to, to talk about barbecue and tobacco pairing. Uh, you naysayed <laughs> with a vengeance. You know, we, I feel like our, our listeners and, and, and viewers give us a lot of license when we uh, do our pairing stuff. You know, we, uh, we, we do, we put a lot of thought into it and, and we are pride ourselves in that. But you know, I mean, are, are, are you going to go buy necessarily, if you're listening to this, are you going to go buy a, you know, $35 bottle of whiskey just so you can smoke it with one bowl of Dunhill 965? I mean, I, I don't know. You might, you know, but, that's but not we, the goal. But the we, goal is for us to drink the well, whiskey I, on air. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> so our listeners give us a lot of license for that. But, right. but dude, a, a barbecue and and tobacco pairing? Because nobody, no, uh, you're right. Because right. hashtag America. No. Like, I mean, like what? <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but like, what? That, there's literally like, because nobody barbecues while smoking their pipe. By the way, keep sending those just, pictures, which you already come have. on, man. I'm just saying, this may be your cornbread and milk. It'd be shame. I, think, I don't I think, know, dude. I that, think the listeners are with me on that'd this. That'd be that'd be shame shameless. I mean, like well, we. I mean, are I mean, we? I mean, I look, I'm okay. I love barbecue. <laughs> I, I love barbecue. I had a half slab of ribs yesterday. It was great. But um, uh, well, I'll tell you this: <laughs> the only thing more American than barbecue. It's tobacco. tobacco. That's right. <laughs> so we got we got a great show tonight that we're going to be talking about this. So so walk us through, man, the history of tobacco in America. Well, and and we wanted to talk about this. Obviously, this is kind of a July Fourth uh, tribute. We um, celebrated Independence Day here in the states yesterday, and um, you know, actually, it's funny. I don't know the date uh, of of the independent. Do do you know offhand what the anniversary was yesterday? What what was America's birthday yesterday? Uh, wait, July Fourth. 
But, but, but they actually signed it on the third, right? No. Or I, wait, what was the whole I'm deal? asking how old America is. Oh. It'd be um, 200 and... Uh, it's impolite to ask a... Um, a lady how old she is. is right. Including Lady Liberty. In, 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 okay, we'll go We'll go with that. But uh, anyway... I'm an American. I don't know anything about history, geography. <laughs> yeah, you fit right in. That's great. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, so we, you know, obviously, um, you know, on Independence Day, we, you know, have a lot of pride in our country. And, and we have a very unique way of life here that, um, you know, is... Uh, always every four years up for uh, up for discussion on what that is going to look like <laughs> right, and all that right. kind of stuff. And uh, obviously we're in one of those years this year, but um, which and is been, typically a beautiful part of our, and it's been, it, I wouldn't call this year beautiful, but anyway, uh, we'll, typically. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss it some other time <laughs> uh, when, when we're, when we have that $35 bottle of whiskey, but you know, we, we have such a unique system of government here, but also our, our country has such an interesting story um, that is woven intimately with, this leaf that we love, this mm -hmm. this interesting uh, leaf with these wonderful properties of, of um, you know uh, it, it, medicine to our soul, <laughs> and and and, it, and it's it, this um, uh, beautiful and heartbreaking and uh, you know um, uh, just very full, interesting, uh, you know wonderful and tragic uh, interwoven thing that is tobacco in America. The and history so, of America is in fact the history of tobacco or at least reflects it in many ways. It, it really is. Versa. It really is. So we just want to spend uh, just a few minutes kind of talking about that. Um, and, and, you know, obviously we have spent several episodes in the past talking about kind of the history of tobacco uh, period, you know, just uh, tobacco, you know, obviously we had, uh, you know, the Spanish come and in the, um, uh, you know, West East Indies, I'm sorry, uh, you know, uh, as they were kind of island hopping down there, they were uh, interacting with these natives, finding, you know, uh, local, uh, you know, what they called Indians at the time, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, were inhaling this leaf. You know, they would burn this leaf on fire and inhale it. And they were, you know, they, they took some of this back to Europe and, uh, you know, in some cases were jailed because of it, because right. it was just so such an insane practice. What is this? This what, seems what, so odd. Right. They're, they're, they're drinking smoke. They're drink, drinking fire, you and, know, is and what And at the what time it was with clay, right? I mean, it was in the ground. Is that correct? Uh what, are you mean as far as the smoking apparatus? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the yeah. smoking method for actually lighting it on fire and breathing in the smoke. Uh, yeah, I, actually, I'm not. I, I have trouble remembering right off offhand. I think they either used uh, wooden pipes or, or clay pipes. I, I'm not sure, to be honest. I can't remember. Or Actually. maybe it was like a cane or like a sugar piece of sugar cane or something. Ooh. I'll have to go back and, and look at that. I can't, can't remember offhand. But, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, in 1528, so you had the, the Spanish uh, and, and then Portuguese kind of take this back to Europe. And, um, and throughout the 16th and 17th century, uh, you know, the tobacco usage exploded through Europe. Now, this was, um, you know, obviously a time of great drama. I mean, it wasn't just like it just took over uh, automatically. There was a lot of uh, back and forth, like, what is this new thing? And uh, should we be doing this? And, <laughs> you know, uh, are, are we becoming dragons by doing this? Or like, you know, what? I mean, what, what is, what's going on with this? Wait, what, what, why did you just lock up Frederick? Well, he was smoking this something. He lit it on fire and he drank the smoke. Oh, that sounds crazy. But it smells amazing. But it smells so good. And he's so relaxed. Let's, and all of a sudden his wife likes him more. Let's, <laughs> let's unlock him, have him start a business. And then... <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Wish you should write a story, but oh hell, Frederick! Uh, <laughs> Who is this Frederick, the founder of tobacco? Apparently, uh, apparently so. <laughs> yeah, forget Walter Walter Raleigh. Sorry. Um, so you know you had a uh, you had this uh, explosion of tobacco. Sorry, that's right. On the uh, on you know in 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 Europe there, uh, you know, and obviously as America was settled more and more by uh, the Northern Europeans, Britain uh, in, in particular. Uh, the settlers came to America and, um, you know, in droves, obviously, initially they were looking for things like gold and silver, precious metals. But, um, you know, they needed to trade with the natives in order mm -hmm. to get supplies, just even, you know, even stuff like raw material. But well, even and even stuff like food, things to survive on, you know. Um, but, you know, as their gold and silver was becoming less and less available just because they you know they got to america thinking oh we'll go find all this precious metal and then you know in america you've got you know great soil and you've got livestock and wild you know wildlife and all this stuff but but you don't really have a lot of precious metal um at least on the eastern seaboard there and so right. you know out of necessity they started um you know trading uh you know using tobacco as a form of currency with the native americans and so the you know the tobacco became a viable alternative to um, you know, to silver and gold at the time, uh, which is which is interesting. So, um, 
as as the tobacco uh, began to be used like that, it e even in some cases uh, was sanctioned by the state as a way of determining a person's wealth. And so you could have a gentleman that, uh, you know, his, his estate was, uh, you know, valued based on how much tobacco that he either produced or that his family, uh, you know, was able to consume during a year or huh. something like that, huh. which is really fascinating to me. Um, and, and so even with that, uh, tobacco, because it was used basically as a currency, uh, had a legitimate um, uh, rate of conversion to to gold and silver. So you could, at, at any given point in time, say this amount of tobacco is worth this much gold or silver. Really? Which I think is really interesting. It's like when you go to the bank and say, you know, hey, I need to exchange $100 for uh, for the British pound, like, or the Euro, like, you know, then they go look at the, you know, exchange rate and what's the conversion they give you. Okay. Well, your hundred dollars today is worth, you know, uh, you know, 80 British pounds or whatever. Right. You know? And so, right. and it, the, anyway, similar thing kind of took place there, uh, which is kind of, kind of fascinating, but, um, that's why you always want to invest in precious metals and, and Tobacco. And tobacco, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then bury it in the backyard right, right, with the right. rest of us that are paranoid, right. <laughs> um, of course, with the FDA, we've got uh, everyone's uh, burying it in their, like, you know, sock drawer and stuff. So, That's the thing. Right. All the conspiracy theorists are like, no, we're hoarding gold. But you, you're like the chief of like, no, no, I'm nah, hoarding the tobacco. That's not right. When yeah. the bombs go off and the, the stock market <laughs> crashes, this, this will be what. All this stuff here, this isn't for sale. This is, <laughs> this is your insurance. This that's is right. your investment. Yeah, right that's here. right. That's, that's my retirement fund out there. I love it. I love it. So, um, you know, and, 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 and so as you had the, the state and also even the church to some extent, mm. uh, you know, start to value people's wealth and, and also people's, um, you know, earning potential based on the amount of tobacco that they either produced or consumed, then, um, you know, obviously tobacco became a very important thing on its own. Could people tithe with tobacco? Uh, they could. If I had a church, they would be. I tell you what, that. man. I bet. I bet your father would be all if about we, that. If we started, yeah. If we if we if we start one, we'll have to think about that. That's but, good. Um, yeah. There is so much heresy going on right no, now. All right. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So Back on track. I apologize. I'm gonna um, reform tonight. Yeah, we've got um, you know, the, this concept then that you know tobacco became very important, but um, you know, we we wouldn't talk about tobacco in America even before the American Revolution if we didn't talk about slavery. And so, mm -hmm. you know, slavery, obviously, this extremely um, painful, um, you know, tragic, uh, you know, practice that, you know, didn't originate in America, obviously, but, um, you know, became predominant here as far as, you know, producing agricultural products here. And, and what what's interesting is, um, as much as we love tobacco, tobacco has a checkered history with uh, the advance of slavery in America as a viable uh, solution to the labor problem. And, yeah. and, and what, what's fascinating is you've got, uh, you know, think about, I think a lot of folks, they think, okay, when the, when the, uh, Europeans came into the new world, they, uh, immediately installed kind of slavery as their, uh, mode of choice as far as, you know, working these fields and that kind of thing. But what happened is, uh, actually more of the initial, uh, labor force was dedicated, you know, by, uh, this in, this concept of indentured servitude, indentured servants, you know, these are people that basically would, you know, come to you and say, look, I'll, I'll go over to this new world with you uh, that I don't know about. I will give you my, uh, my life for the next, you know, 15 years. And by the end of that 15 years, you'll, you know, set me up with a nice little, uh, you know, nest egg and give me some land and, and then I'll be free to go. Right, so it's kind of right. like, I'm, I'm basically giving you uh, my my work efforts for the next you know decade or whatever, and then they give you some land. Well, what what happened is the tobacco. You know, at, at first this was a viable option for growers, right? So they'd bring these indentured servants over, and then you know at the end they'd give them some land. But but the thing is, tobacco because it was becoming so popular in Europe, it made the land that much more valuable right and so it didn't like these farmers they were having to this like you know from a profit and loss standpoint they were having this kind of gut-wrenching thing well you know i guess if i bring these indentured servants over i you know i, I sure you know I, i'm gonna have to at some point give them this really valuable land that's producing so much income for me right, right um yeah. and and so that's when uh you know they started taking a closer look at some of this indentured servitude and um you know and and so the idea, you know, unfortunately, and, and just, you know, due to economics and, you know, the insensitivity of, of people being removed from other people's cultures and whatnot. But um, as indentured servitude became less 
financially viable, uh, slavery became the, um, you know, kind of the MO for these folks to, to grow the tobacco. Yeah. And we talked about that actually in our, in our last episode of the pipes and pipe, uh, pipe, pipe tobacco pirates and, uh, and whatnot about how yeah. there's the triangular yeah. trade, That's which right. was, yeah. uh, I think cloth yeah. from Europe coming to Africa, enslaved Africans going to America and America sending tobacco. To well, Europe. there was sugar in there somewhere. Sugar in there know. somewhere. Yeah. I, I think I, I should know this, but yeah, I think you had sugar maybe going to Africa and then uh, sugar grown in Europe. Uh, no, that would be, um, that would be in the, in the Caribbean. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I, I can't remember. I that can't one. recall. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have someone school us very shortly on Twitter, uh, about the triangular, triangular trade, but pipes, <laughs> pipes and pirates or pirates and pipe tobacco, whatever the last one is. That's Go back right. and listen to that one. That's we, right. We covered it. There. We knew then we don't know now. Yay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time travel. Um, but you know, anyway, so it's interesting, this, this tobacco, um, it's an incredibly labor, labor intensive, uh, crop to, you know, to, to handle and, um, you know, uh, grow and, you know, grow, you know, productively and then cure and all these things. And so, you know, they saw this as a way to, um, you know, basically get cheap labor to come in and, and kind of take care of this. And, and, and what's interesting is tobacco didn't just increase a land's value because tobacco is so popularly, you know, being consumed in Europe. It, it actually increased the land's value for this other weird reason uh tobacco uh you know for those that are more into agriculture uh they would know and i, I obviously have just read about this i have no background in agriculture at all i'm a um inner city wannabe hipster you know but <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't know you know the first thing about chickens but other than you know how to cook them in the oh, oven delicious. but um yeah so <laughs> you know t tobacco though um supposedly is extremely hard on the land that it's cultivated in. Oh, really? And so, like, very, very hard on the land. It just soaks oh. up nutrients and, and reduces the quality of the land very, uh, very fast at a very, at a very quick rate. And so, uh, it, you know, as it's using up this nutrients, it's just it's making the soil, uh, you know, a little harsher to to work with. And and what's strange is that, according to you know, just my study. European food crops, these cereals that they would grow, primarily barley in Europe, um, require some harsh soil, which, which is strange. You, you would think, you know, they, they came to the New World. They're, you know, they're in the Tidewater area of Virginia, and they've got this really rich soil with all these nutrients in it. And I, I kind of get the idea. It's almost like eating a piece of cake every day. Like the, like the barley, it was too, huh. they, it couldn't handle this rich soil. It needed something more uh, that, that would make it, fight for its survival a little bit. Interesting. Okay. And so what okay. they under, what they found out is that uh, the, the tobacco, they could plant this tobacco in these fields, and then the tobacco, just because of how rough it is on the on the environment, would actually degrade some of the soil and make it more appropriate for things like barley. Man, nature's incredible. So, so they could eat. Yeah, yeah, it's just crazy. So not only was the was the uh, popularity of tobacco back in Europe a part of the explosion of tobacco, but then also, um, you know, the, the qualities that, tobacco had that helped it eventually grow food for 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 these folks which then they in turn traded to uh you know the indians and things like that so um just a really weird kind of thing and 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 the story of all this you know we've we've talked about you know like um you know just uh it bring more settlers to america trading it with the native americans for natural resources bringing in slavery and then uh, you know, doing away with the whole working class of people called indentured servants, and then, uh, and and then now, uh, you know, making land more valuable for uh, for foodstuffs and things like that. So, it, literally, the the incredible explosive growth over the 18th century, you know, up until the point of the American Revolution was was due to tobacco. It, it, it was. You think about all <laughs> those all those little economic engines that are that are going for good or for bad, yeah. whatever they are, like. Uh, you know, all this at some point was touched by uh, this leaf that we that we love and are and are passionate about, and so uh, just very fascinating. Yeah, um, the tobacco growth was directly responsible for American growth, um, and, and it was the first crop that transformed the American economy from you know that subsistence agriculture where you know people are just fighting to survive. You know, I'm going to grow in my backyard what I can eat, and that's and that's it. It, it transformed the American economy from from that to a you know production 
uh, you know, agrarian economy where, you know, it was a viable way to grow things to sell to others. And then you buy your own goods that you want, whether yeah. it be, uh, you know, clothing or food or luxury items or whatever. And so, uh, you know, just the natural kind of pace of civilization that uh, some of these, uh, you know, immigrants were used to in, in Europe. So um, it, just very fascinating to think about uh, how key the growth of the colonial America was, uh, you know, how, how deeply connected and rooted that is with, with this leaf, uh, tobacco. And so, um, you know, anyway, as, as America grew and, and continued to, you know, get on its own feet, they, you know, had more and more reason to, uh, desire, uh, things like influence and, uh, you know, political independence and things like that. And, and, and all the way up through the late 18th century, you know, you, you had, um, you know, this kind of, um, uh, quasi aristocracy developing on this side of the pond, you know, the, where people had taken advantage of these benefits from uh, all the economy that had come from the tobacco stuff. And, uh, you know, eventually, um, you know, felt like, you know, they needed their own government. And, uh, and so the, the revolution broke out. And then somewhere in there, cowboys came. When did that happen? Uh, that, that was later. Yeah. yeah. It always, you know, there's always like this, you think of like America, <laughs> no, 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 but like, seriously, you, it, Grant me this a little bit here. I, no, no, roll with it. We're, we're, we're all friends. Come on. <laughs> Bring it on. So, you know, it, it, I don't, it just seems like, you know, you think about kind of uh, America and you think of, you know, the Whigs and, and you know, a bunch of British people who don't want to pay taxes anymore. And then somewhere we became cowboys. Right. But, like, there just seems like a weird, like, there's a, when you think of eras in our history, there right. just seems like a, there's a very stark difference in kind of the iconic, you know, American uh, pioneer. I just knocked over my Tilbury. And, uh. <laughs> And then the cowboy, you know what I mean? No, yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, you know that there's like a missing link there in terms of our mythology well, of, of just, kind of the history of, th of there's, the colonies. There's a lot that happened there, you know, from you know the late you know late 1700s up until you know the middle of the 19th century. I mean, you've got a lot going on there that's that's um, kind of overshadowed by the two things that bookend. That. Fair enough. You know, the, the, you know, the things that bookend that are the American Revolution and then on the other side, the Civil War and, you know, moving on into the 20th century. So I, I don't know. I um, Just go read a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was that too harsh? I don't know. Maybe that was too harsh. I don't know. I don't have time to read. Maybe I'll find a podcast. <laughs> great history podcast out there. Yeah. Yep. What a great history lesson. Yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's just kind of fun to revisit some of those things occasionally. And uh, obviously, we're all, uh, to some extent, even just by nature of, you know, going to, um, you know, at grade school in the United States, we're familiar with some of these things. But uh, we need to remember how deeply interwoven, um, you know, this this passion and hobby that we have about tobacco is um, with the history of our of our very way of life. Yeah. And I, I think that's worth paying attention to. Absolutely. Yeah. And what a great time to do it, man. Yeah. Talk about a, uh, an American history is tobacco history and tobacco history is American history. And what could be more American? The Missouri Meerschaum pipes. Man, a corn cob pipe. Are you kidding me? Isn't Missouri Meerschaum? Hashtag me, America. Co correct me if I'm wrong here, but isn't Missouri Meerschaum like the oldest pipe manufacturer in America? Uh, I, I wouldn't it's doubt it. Certainly one of them. Be, and, and, and of course, it's based in Washington, Missouri, yeah. uh, which of course is based after, uh, named after our first president. So, and uh, and, and what, which which uh, pipe are we featuring from Missouri Meerschaum tonight? Man, once again, we have a wonderful uh, pipe from Missouri Meerschaum. Unfortunately, it's one of these that I'm going to butcher the name if I try to say it. It's so easy. Eaton. 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 Okay. It's just Eaton. All right. Well, because yeah, you can say Eaton. No. What, what you done, Aiton? It's, it's it. It's E A T O N. <laughs> it's the Eaton corn cob pipe. We've got uh, just a real lovely little pipe here with a, a small um, acrylic stem on the end. Just a real nice uh, kind of an amber uh, plastic piece there on the end. A uh, real uh, long uh, kind of pencil shank there, and then a, um, a you know a smallish uh, kind of rounded billiard style bowl there. Uh, I, again, a lot of these Missouri Meerschaum pipes, including the um, the Huck Finn pipe, which I'm a big fan of, uh, they kind of remind me uh, of this uh, of a of a kind of a Cobb version of a Bing's favorite. Which, uh, of course, if you're a longtime listener of the of Country Squire Radio, you'll know I'm just a big sucker for. So um, anyway, I you know I, I I love these style pipes that. Uh, the folks at Missouri Meerschaum have put so much thought and effort into designing. Um, with this longer kind of wooden shank, it's paired with this uh, shorter, um, almost Levat style, uh, you know, mouthpiece that I think just really adds a nice uh, layer of dimension there. So, 
Um, Bo, does that give you enough content to uh, to to edit while while while, while you plug in your computer? Save computer from dying. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, you know, one of the things you can give, this the, is fun. The Levat <laughs> seems to be a a consistent uh, kind of style in terms of their smaller bowls. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It's a really, really beautiful pipe. If you haven't checked it out, you should. You want to talk about competitive price. Look, they've got wonderfully priced pipes at wonderful quality. You're going to want to check them out. Missouri Meerschaum. Thanks so much to them for sponsoring the show. And yeah. we thank all of you for supporting them. Thanks so much to them for supporting this show. And we thank you guys so much for supporting them. I think I've had a long day. I don't know what's happened tonight. <laughs> you hadn't been drinking at all. I can vouch for that. This is water, wherever your cup is. Yeah, yeah, wherever it is. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. It's because, you know, with, with yesterday being a holiday and being completely out of town the rest of this week, like I've had to do a, like an entire week's worth of work in one day. Yeah, yeah. And like meetings have been stacked on stacked on stacked on top of each other and it's just been go, go, go nonstop. Can you turn up your world's smallest violin? I'm having a little, a little trouble hearing you. Uh, <laughs> hey, re re real quick, uh, we uh, have a tweet in that I have to read if I can find it again. He yeah. says, uh, this is Adam uh, Bybee at Pesky Prussian on Twitter. He says, I'd watch you guys talk about tobacco pairings with Jane Eyre novels if you really wanted to. Man, that is dedication. Like, so so that is someone, Bo, that, right that, that is someone that probably would be on board with a uh, with a barbecue and uh and and tobacco pair. We should come up with just, just something completely ridiculous one time. Like, like, I don't know, like what what uh, I think the barbecue pair. What, what kind of pair of socks go best with English blends or something? I don't know. I mean, I, I I'm sure coming next April first, you could have a lot of fun with that. I I think I, think I, think I would I would I would be very annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Pipe question of the week this week is brought in to us uh, Christopher Kafer, who's written writ, writ, written this in. Uh, says, what are both of your thoughts on leather wrapped pipes? Uh, was there a point in their origin, or was it merely for the aesthetic? Uh, keep up the great work, guys, and congrats on both your business success. Well, Christopher, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you know, as far as I can tell, just from uh, you know reading up on this a little bit, uh, leather wrapped pipes is is an aesthetic thing. This is something that uh, hey, it sure what's what's two luxury items that people know and love and would like maybe to combine together a pipe and a piece of leather. You know, um, I I think if if the leather wrapped pipe does have any purpose other than just being an interesting uh, way to uh, you know, cloak a pipe in this beautiful piece of leather. Right. It, it also could could be for maybe a pipe if if the pipe has uh, bad grain or if it's got uh, maybe some kind of you know defect or something that would make it not particularly pretty to look at uh, from a grain standpoint. Well, you know, what better way to you know make this piece of briar uh, you know functional and beautiful and all that than putting you know very nice supple leather around around the pipe like that? Um, I, I have never really been a big fan. I um, have you smoked one before? I, you know, I don't own one. I have, uh, you know, have a lot of friends that have one. I guess I've never have smoked one, but, uh, you know, in my sense, you're, you know, the, the pipe, you're, you're, you're just putting an extra layer of something on top of it that is preventing it from, um, maybe breathing, uh, how it wants to. And so I, you know, I don't know. I, I, for me, I, I think, uh, it would probably produce a, uh, a, maybe a hotter bowl. Um, and I, I just, I've never really, uh, considered one of myself, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know Savinelli used to make, um, a beautiful other pipe called the, um, what was that called? The cricket. It's called the cricket, which I like that name. It's a cool name. For cricket. Pipe. Yes. But, cricket. Um, but you know, they, uh, yeah, I mean, beautiful pipes and, and, and what's nice about them kind of like the unfinished Savinelli's and any natural, you know, unfinished pipe, uh, the, the leather is going to color over time just with the oil on your hands, which is, which is kind of cool. So, um, and I'm sure it feels real comfortable in your, in your palm and all that, but, for me, you know, the experience of smoking a pipe, I want a cool, um, light smoke. And, uh, you know, I think the, the leather just kind of, uh, in, in addition to whatever kind of glue or adhesive they have to put on the wood to keep the leather there, you know, um, you know, I, I just don't think that, uh, lends itself to, you know, a particularly, uh, you know, pleasant smoke, but that's, uh, that's just me. And again, I've never, um, never owned one. Yeah. You know, I've always been, every single time I've seen them, it just seems like, I don't get them. Like, it's like my mind has a hard time computing them. But at the same time, I'd be curious to learn more. That might need to be a subject matter for a... It, it might It might be. It might be worth kind of diving in and learn a little bit there. Because it yeah. sounds like, you know, it sounds like both of us are kind of operating off of opinion. And so... Uh, <laughs> Imagine us doing anything other well, than that. Well, you know. <laughs> That's what we bring. But hey, one way or the other, great question. Hey, guys, Yeah, really good. Y'all uh, chime in on Facebook, too. Do you like the leather-coated uh, pipes? What are your opinions? What do you like? What do you not like? 
Um, put those comments on Facebook. We'd love to see that. And thanks, Chris, for sending in that pipe question of the week. I, I think I'd be interested in uh, hearing, you know, folks that do have leather wrap pipes. I, I would like to know how those wear, how, how those age and wear. You yeah. know, I, I've seen uh, this one very good friend of mine that has uh, an older leather wrap pipe. You know, at some point, the adhesive starts to wear on the leather that's holding the leather to the bowl. Oh, where is and it so, like yeah, abuse over time? A, a, exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, and so, you know, you've got the uh, the leather kind of peeling away from the bowl and, you know, and, and then maybe uh, it gets too hot. And so one part's really colored one way, another part's colored another yeah. way than rather than a kind of a, a uniform patina on the leather that you might hope for. And so I, I don't know. I, you know, for me, um, it, it's kind of like it, in my mind, I hope I don't offend anyone with this. I probably will. But it's kind of like you buying a, a Jaguar or a, you know, Mercedes or something. But then, but then inside this beautiful car, you've got like a chandelier. Like, like just don't. Like, like one's good enough, you know, just, just buy the chandelier or, or buy their Jaguar. Do people but, do that? But don't put them together. Is that a thing? I, it, occasionally it is. Yeah. I've never been inside a Mercedes that had a chandelier in it, but uh, you know, I, your, your mileage may vary. It, it might. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, great pipe question. If you got a pipe question of the week, send it in CSR at potisteri.com. Quick fire question. Bring them, baby. All right, man. We got quick fire questions in from uh, Mortensen Devi. And I know I'm mispronouncing your name. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's actually approached us and been very gracious. Several with times. Us. And, and, and Several you still times. butcher it, and that's okay. Can, because can, can, I mean, it's out of love at this point. I call you JD on you do. the show anyway. <laughs> and I, and I, I choose each time to not choke you. And, okay. and, and I'm still alive. <laughs> Love you, Morton. All right, so uh, here we go. You ready for this? Yeah. A hundred percent or a hundred and ten percent of of anything? A hundred percent or a hundred and ten percent? Well, I think I want a hundred and ten percent. Yeah. If I, it's a good thing, you know. I mean, why have why have all when you can have all and then plus some? That's right. That's good. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm all about giving a hundred and ten percent. And uh, yeah, if I can get a, I never expect to get a hundred and ten percent, but I, I love it when I do. I mean, I think. I think you know Einstein would be uh, disappointed in our in our mathematics here, you know, because it isn't anything over a hundred percent kind of like dividing by zero. You just can't really do that. Yeah, yeah, hundred ten percent, baby, all the way, all the yeah. I want the top. Pick your friends or pick your nose. Is that a saying? Is that a thing? Wow, these questions are crazy, little, Morton. Little, yeah, um, crazy on that one. I'm gonna pick my friends. Yeah, I mean. What about pick your friend's oh, nose? Pick my nose up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, pick your friends. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, friends. we'll go with that. All right, who shot first, Han or Greedo? Han. Han, Han shot first. We're, we're old school like that. Yeah. Uh, and then finally. This makes me angry to even talk about that. I love this. This is an Eddie Izzard reference, and I appreciate you for it. Uh, cake or death? Wow. You know this bit, right? From no, no, I don't. Oh, it's so great. It's uh, uh it's a Church of England joke, actually. He's okay. talking about, okay. I'm remembering Kirk is like, yes, yes, welcome to Church of England, cake or death. <laughs> <laughs> you there, cake or death? Uh, cake, please. Uh, yeah, here you go, very well. You there, cake or death? Cake, please. Okay, another cake. We're going to run out at this rate. Wow. You there, cake or death? Uh, death. No, no, I meant cake. Ah, <laughs> said death. Too late. <laughs> you go to the back of the aisle. Uh, we didn't expect such a rush on cake. I, I I, think I'd have to go with cake as a good Anglican. <laughs> <laughs> give, me, give me cake. You can do whatever you want. Just don't block the aisle on the way to the cake. Let them eat cake. <laughs> uh, I will go cake as well. Morton, you uh, successfully got us to answer all of the uh uh, choices correctly, or at least on the same answer, which means you either win or lose, depending on uh, what you want to judge as winning or losing. We should have a prize for that. I feel like we should. We, yeah, we, we should, because it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's uh, it's kind of fun. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. All right, good stuff. Hey, get quick fire <laughs> questions. Love getting those in. Send them in. CSR at potisteri.com. Hey, Russ, uh, we got a tweet in from our friend Russ Hicks, a uh, good friend in, um, in Georgia. He says, where's all that light in the shop coming from? So bright. And, uh, you, you know, if you were listening at the front of the show, we um, we moved the tobacco bar to the front of the shop. And so uh, we're literally just feet away, uh, just a very few feet away from this uh, this beautiful kind of picture window here that we've got up front. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird even for the viewers to get used to as we were setting the camera up tonight to uh, get used to tonight's show. We 
um, you know, had to adjust a few things just to kind of, you know, uh, get get this uh, together. We'll have to adjust how do we do the show. I've had to adjust just how I kind of operate daily, you know, even today being our first day when I had to go get some more blending tobacco. I was going to the wrong place <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to take a little while to get used to, but it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I, I want to give a shout out to our listener, Larry, uh, from Washington State who um, wants us to m know very clearly how much these pop filters bother him. Um, and, and, and Did I he think, tweet in? I think, no, he called earlier today. Oh, he and, called and, earlier. And he, and he called, we talked about uh, some things, we talked about some blends and some FDA stuff and, um, and this and that. But, but Larry wanted, uh, wanted me to, to know uh, in, in the strongest of, uh, of terms that uh, these, these black circles, if you're watching live, these black circles that are in front of Bo and, and my face, uh, if you look at us when we're like head on, like in it, it just kind of, Bo, put, put your face in. Yeah. It just looks like Bo's got a big open mouth. <laughs> it's just kind of, and, and so Larry, it, you know, for some people it just really bothers. And so I, I'm actually trying to sit uh, sideways tonight. Well, I mean, I've, I've been kind of leaning to the side a little bit because we, yeah. we've gone a little bit of an angle. So and and we got sense. a little bit of an angle. So we're, we're going to, I'm, I'm just surprised people want to see my beautiful face. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, Look, <laughs> we love we love doing the live show uh, here at countrysquireradio.com and, and for people to tune in for it, which is awesome. It's it's great to be able for us to, to feel like we see you, even though you look like a webcam to us. Uh, but at least you get a chance to kind of sit in, <laughs> sit in and, and uh, see see kind of what the experience would be like sitting in the shop. But we are a podcast first, so audio quality over everything else, and that means the pop filter is here to stay. It's got it. It does have to be here. Yes, indeed. But, but occasionally, I can sit, you know, to the side. All right. <laughs> we got a uh, YouTube comment, and it's kind of a follow up from last week. This yeah. comes in from uh, Rick Waller, uh, who says, "Great topic, guys. Uh, can you perform again? We were talking about a pipe one hundred and one last week about yeah. cake and yeah. uh, and maintaining that." He says, uh, "Great topic, guys. Can you perform the honey process?" if you have already started smoking a pipe and he wants to clarify that he has uh, two fairly new pipes that he has yeah. attempted to break in. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, you can, if you're having trouble building cake, obviously the honey is not going to stay there a long, you know, a long time. The honey is going to caramelize and then burn away. Um, you know, this is kind of, you know, what it's for. It's really there just as a vehicle to get ash to stick to the side of the, of the, of the pipe. You know, I, Honestly, though, you don't put honey in your pipe unless you're trying to build cake. Don't, you know, don't put honey in your pipe uh, once you've got a well-developed cake. And, um, and you know, I, I, I don't know. I would just, I would, I would very much shy away from that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think if you smoked it a few times and want to try it just to kind of advance the process some, uh, that that would be okay. Hey, we also got a tweet in earlier in the show, actually, uh, which came in from, uh, let me find, let me find it. Uh, from Pipe Master, who asks if he can buy the other 10 of Pembroke. So, Pipe Master. I'm buying this one. Pipe Master, it's, it's yours. All right. And that now, <laughs> that, first How's time. How's that for a sale? Man, this is a historic episode of Country Square Radio. First time we sold you something. You sold out on the show. On air. Wow. Because <laughs> I'm buying this Well, one. no, I do I still, just still have this bag of uh, Tilbury here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, the show's over. We got a, Phone lines are still active. <laughs> we got another email in. You want to read that one from Dan? Uh, yeah, let's see here. Hold on a second. Yeah, this one's from Dan uh, through email. He says, hey, John, David, and Bo, I've really enjoyed the show. I was searching for another podcast when I serendipitously discovered Country Squire Radio. I've been listening to old episodes on my drive home, and it makes for a relaxing evening and serves as ample motivation to light up my pipe. Um, I appreciate all the information, discussions, and tips on the show. I purchased several several great tobaccos and a few pipes based on what I've learned. CSR has definitely helped me become a more proficient and prolific pipe smoker. We've done our jobs. Uh, you guys do a great job, and CSR is the most interesting and highest quality podcast Man. that I listen to. Man, Bo. Well done, sir. Uh, the production quality puts most of the biggest podcasts to shame. Mm. It is possible. Well, we don't want to toot our horn, you know, or anything, but uh, it is possible to make it easier. Is it possible to make it easier to get the archived episodes? I enjoy listening to them, but is a pain. But it is a pain to stream them from. There, it is a pain to stream them from Pottery. Maybe archive access could be a perk for using Satchel. I don't. I do use and I do like it. Uh, thanks for your work promoting the craft and hobby of pipe smoking, uh, Dan Schultz. 
Yeah, Dan, uh, first of all, thanks so much for the extreme really high Really kind praise. words, yeah. Uh, he's referring, listening from Podestary, uh, referring to listening from the website, of course. Um, you know, a couple things on that, just real quick. You know, for longtime listeners, you might not realize this, but uh, new new time listeners, if they're coming on the podcast, yeah. they can only get about the last uh, 35 to 40 episodes. I mean, whatever the most recent 35 that's, to 40 that's right. are, yeah. uh, at least through the, uh, through the iTunes and through the RSS feed. Uh, of course, all our entire over 150 archive of shows are available at countrysquireradio.com. That's right. Uh, and, you know, it's it's a good suggestion. I mean, you know, I, I, I love that. I mean, we've got some kind of technical limitations that go along with that. So if we were to make the full archive available, it would probably, uh, we'd have to kind of get creative with it. And it would have to kind of be worth the, uh, the added adjustment and the, uh, technical workaround that would come with it. Yeah. Suffice to say the way the art, well, I'm not going to get into how the RSS is built, but, um, yeah, you, you can't future proof anything. I'll just say that everything you just said, I I'm like one of those dogs that all they hear when you speak is just like circle, triangle, happy face, sunshine. Like I, <laughs> I don't know anything about what you're talking about, but, uh, I know and trust Bo and his, uh, technological proficiency and, um, and we'll uh, leave that to him. Yeah, at some point we'd love to make that available. We do thank you for listening to the Satch- uh, through us to us through Satchel. Uh, if you haven't been listening to us through Satchel, we love it because you can tweet into the show. Maybe even send a few dollars if you wanted to. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, we also love it because uh, not only that, but you can also uh, tune in to the show. Uh, no matter what device, if you've got an Android, if you've got an iPhone, we, we do want to encourage you to, if you haven't already done so, you can go to iTunes, you can write us a review. It's still a good thing to do, and we hope that you would uh, consider doing that. You can keep up with us. You can email the show, CSR at Potisteri, with any of your pipe questions of the week, your quick fire questions. You can tweet into the show at Squire Radio, or you can follow us uh, on, on our personal channels. I'm at the real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, and you can get us at the shop at, at underscore Country Squire. And all that contact information and more can be found at CountrySquireRadio.com. Be on the lookout, Facebook and Twitter, uh, for these uh, in these next uh, couple of uh, days and hours, as I'll be in Chicago. Especially if you're in the Chicago area, would love to meet up with you. I think that'd be great. Got to make mention real quick of our final sponsor for the show, which should have gone before That's right. uh, uh, the listener feedback, but we can cut that in and post. That's right. Uh, so let's do that real quick to cut that in, and then the uh, I'll work my editing manager. <laughs> That's exactly right. Got some great listener feedback this week, but first we want to tell you about our final sponsor for the show, thispipelife.com. That's right, thispipelife.com. They've done such a good job at building this brand new community online, just kind of pulling together all the threads of uh, the pipe smoking world out there. Uh, and, and really integrating it with social media. And we're really proud to, to be a part of that. Yeah, every single week, whenever we've got a new show, I'm going to try to get up on there and, and post something. I think in the general forums, uh, you know, they've got their uh, the pipeline, which is their forums. I think it's such a great name for a forum community. And, uh, and uh, kind of go up there, maybe post a question uh, from this week's episode, maybe post something for next week's episode. So if you haven't gotten a chance to join the community, we encourage you to do so. Thispipelife.com. And uh, yeah, and be on the lookout in those forums. But also let them know that you heard about it because of Country Squire Radio. That's right. All right, man. We had a uh, great show tonight. This is fun, man. It's the first time from this uh, kind of new vantage point in the shop. And it threw me off a little. I'm not yeah, going to lie. A, it's a little strange. Like, yeah. I love this, but it did. It, for, I don't know. Just something just it's, feels it's, a little different. It's a little strange. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll get used to it. it we'll, 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 yeah. It'll, it'll, like, look, I, I dig it, man. We've got uh, all this wonderful space. Hopefully, in the, the coming days and weeks, we'll be able to open this up so that uh, that you guys can actually, for, for those of you who want to, to actually come and attend, um, we might be able to make that happen. So. Mm-hmm. I love the idea, man. Wonderful. Let's go have a night. See you, brother. All right, guys. Thank you all so much. Sorry for all the craziness, but hope it was worth the price of admission. Worth the <laughs> worth the craziness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a really good time. Y'all, thanks again for uh, just all your involvement and, um, and friendship. It's been great interacting with y'all over the past several weeks as we've had so much going on. And um, anyway, look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye. Bye, guys.